Fisher War Zone. In the first minute and 20 seconds of this, we hear news reports detailing that this crime family has the boss of this crime family has hundreds of murders on his conscience and he hasn't spent a single day in jail. We see the Punisher only from from the back. We don't really get a complete idea of what he looks like, just hints. We feel his rage grow as we get the details in these news stories. And then we get the opening credits. I'm not going to claim that this is quite on the level of the best of John Woo's work, but it does have that same kind of almost caressing of the guns by the camera this opening sequence. It's like if the guns were breasts and legs, this would be a porno. Then we see the family itself. We get some character development and we are propelled into the first big action scene. Frank Castle takes out 20 or 30 people within a very short space of time and somehow it's continually spectacular. He takes them out with immense ease and very quickly, very, very efficiently and at this point, you are certain this is the fucking Punisher. This is it right here. This is, I would say, as close as we're going to get to a proper, big-budget, well-produced comic adaptation of The Punisher. The... This is much more like a comic book adaptation than the first was. There, the colors are a real key to this. The, the filmmakers here have a very, very keen visual sense. And I think what they really did was they highlight specific colors. Like, they pretty much decided this sequence is going to be like green or this sequence is going to be blue and then all the colors have to be like variations on that color. They say this in one of the documentaries on the DVD. And it just really helps it feel... It, it gives it that very visceral sense, very visual, very visually gripping and appealing. The Punisher himself is a complete badass. Like I already said, he's an expert killer. He plans. We believe that he can do this stuff, even though it is quite amazing, the extent. You know, he never does something outright inhuman. And yet he still has that bit of an edge over, you know... He's like slightly above what you would normally expect from a human being, but without us thinking, oh come on, human beings can't do that. What really makes this work? Because just that, just a badass Punisher who has no problems with taking out the criminals is not going to be that fantastic for a real motion picture, you know. It might be fun for a couple of minutes, you know, for t a trailer or just, you know, a masturbatory fan flick or something. A bit of fan fiction. But what really makes this work is that while this is a 
revenge story, it isn't really a revenge story for Frank. It's a revenge story for the bad guy of the film, and I'll get back to that. But it's really more like he's he's going through with what he's doing and what he's been doing, but he's also trying to rescue others. Early on, Frank accidentally kills an undercover agent, and he feels horrible about this. And I want to stress, they did this exactly right. I mean, you can complain if you want about the decision to have him kill one of the good guys, to have the moral ambiguity. I personally think it was a good decision. I will admit that it's not really perfectly resolved because his pain... I don't know, it... They sort of try near the very end to kind of resolve that, but it's maybe the one thing that the film doesn't completely resolve. But the way they do it, the script and the acting of Ray Stevenson, pitch perfect. There is no great soliloquy. This is not, you know, it's not melodramatic. It's just the eyes, the, the brooding. You know, he might throw a, you know, pot against the wall or something. You can tell it is eating him up inside that he accidentally killed one of the people that he is out to protect. You know, someone innocent. And this actually does make him question, you know, there's a line early on, the wife, the surviving wife, confronts him somewhat and asks, who punishes you? You know, what about when you do something wrong? And this is exactly the way that you should go about this, in my opinion. You know, explore the morality of the character. You know, think about, is he... What about when he makes a mistake? You know. But it has Frank sort of... He's, he's out to protect the, you know, the widow and the now fatherless girl because this is a sort of photo negative of his own life you know his own life his you know his wife and child or children died now you know the father of the family died and it becomes a sort of surrogate little bit kind of thing not completely, and it's not like they start living together and get all, you know, homemaker on each other or anything. But it's an interesting exploration of the character. And Stevenson performs, portrays the character spot on. You have the viciousness and you have the moral, the morality of him. Because, well, sometimes... Frank Castle is just a psychopath who goes out to kill for the rush of that, but at his best, at his most interesting, he does truly care about who he kills. He doesn't want to kill the people that he is protecting, you know. The, the acting in general is great. I have to talk about the supporting characters in this. Let's get the meh ones out of the way. When I heard that this was going to have Detective Soap from Welcome Back Frank, I was like, okay. Okay, they put all the tolerable side characters from that in the first film. They take one of the most obnoxious one ones and put them in the but he's actually not that bad. He actually did kind of make me laugh a couple of times. He's a bit of comic relief. He's the the good guy's version of comic relief. There's also one on one of the bad guys is also sort of comic relief. Ink, I think he's called. Ink and his father Pitsy, they're sort of also comic relief. 
I understand that they apparently also appear in the comics. I haven't read that many of the comics, but I am a fan. And that they're apparently different from the comic, I don't care. It's just the same name. It's, you know, a minor reference. It's without taking that entire character. The... Yes, I think that about covers the not great ones. Doug Hutchison plays James to go by what Billy would prefer we call him, and LBJ or Looney Bin Jim as what everybody else calls him when Billy is not around to hear it. This guy's fucking insane. There is just no... He is utterly unpredictable. You just never fucking know with this guy. And a nice subtle little detail. When we first meet him, he's on medication. But they don't bring the medication with them. And as the film progresses, he gets further and further off these drugs that were keeping him at a level that was maybe manageable and just and you see it you see him get more and more little ticks you know and getting more and more agitated more and more out of control and it culminates it fucking culminates it pays off big time and one of the great things about this character in addition to just how fucking off the wall he is. In one of the documentaries, they say that he's like Hannibal Lecter on speed. I would have to agree. One of the, you know, in addition to how weird he is, he clearly loves Billy. And Billy loves him. You know, Billy is the villain of the picture. And it's just so eerie to see these two complete psychopaths really care about each other. You know, Looney Bin Jim with all the little ticks, and Billy, who is Jigsaw with the face, but they love each other. Billy gets tossed into a large, I don't know what it's called, glass crusher or something, by Castle, of course, and this scene is just horrifying as fuck, and when he comes out, you know, you get the little reveal, you know, wrapping the gauze back off, you know, nice little, you know, Tim Burton's original Batman movie, you know, homage with the, you know, gradual reveal, and he looks in the little mirror there, and you may have already seen his face, they, you know, the pictures are out now. I'm not sure it's actually in the trailer, but it's been a while since I watched that. Anyway, fucking horrifying. They did an awesome job on the makeup there, and you can completely understand. Because when you first see him, he is just so full of himself. Literally, the first thing you see him do is fix his hair, then his girlfriend or whatever tries to, like, touch it, you know, caressing or something. He grabs her by the fucking throat and says, do I fix your fucking makeup for you? That is the kind of guy who gets his face demolished by the Punisher in this movie. You can imagine how badly he wants the fucking payback. And that brings me to, he is the one who wants revenge. Looney Bin Jim also, because they love each other, and Jim is honestly upset about, you know, what his brother, you know, that his brother is in pain. You know, it's beyond disturbing and chilling to see these people care so much about each other. On the side of the good guys, we have Colin Salmon, for once not in a shitty-ass Bond flick, or in an equally shitty-ass Paul W.S. Anderson flick, so this must be new to him. He's awesome. 
in this. He's really, really cool. I can see why Anderson keeps hiring him, though I wish he'd stop. Because he doesn't make him look anywhere near this cool. He's the best friend of the agent that got killed, so he really wants to, you know, help bring the the bad guys here down. You know, at first he's mainly just looking for Castle, because it was Castle who fired the bullet, you know. And it wasn't like the gun went off by accident. No, he killed this guy. He just didn't know that it was an agent before after he shot him. But then he does kind of get to see that maybe he should be focusing on Jigsaw. This has a lot of utterly delicious digs at, like, conservative and Republican thinking, you know. You know why Jigsaw's face gets so fucked up? Or, you know, the reason they can't save it, at least? He has to go to a free clinic. Why does he have to go to a free clinic? Oh, and by the way, the free clinic is, of course, I think the line is something along the lines of, they must have got their fucking medical degrees off the internet. Why did he have to go to a free clinic? The medical insurance people said that he missed a patient a payment. Can you fucking believe that? To quote Dominic West's awesome performance. He just... He eats so much fucking scenery that there isn't anything left for the others to respond to. But it fits perfectly. This really is a much more off-the-wall Punisher adaptation. And it really should be, because there are a lot of really... I mean, Jigsaw himself, the moment you, pit, the moment you put Jigsaw in a movie, you have to be somewhat off-the-wall. You can't be completely serious with a guy whose face is fucked up like that. You know, it's like the Joker. You just can't play that completely seriously. You have to be at least a little... You know, okay, the Dark Knight wasn't off the wall, but it had him as a complete psychopath. You know, you can't have... You know... You can't have people that you could forgive when you have characters like that. You know, you have to make them completely fucking insane. This is fantastically shot and edited. The speed at which the action takes place is just immense, you know, constantly. And somehow, in spite of all the action, in spite of all the death, it somehow doesn't quite get to be too much. You're still caring by the end of it, you know. It just works. They had a real sense of how much is appropriate here. I will say Castle is kind of in unbeatable. You know, he just... There are almost no one who can even match. As an example, there is almost no physical fighting in this. And that's because every time Frank can reach the bad guy, he kills them, you know pretty much every single time. There are two or three physical fights, and they're great. But that's it, you know. Other than that, he'll either shoot them, stab them, or, you know, use his hands or the rest of his body to kill them. We genuinely feel for the widow and the girl. I don't remember the widow's name offhand, but the girl's name is Grace. You know, that kind of thing can be, I mean, it is cliche, and it can be kind of, okay, we have to care about them because they're, you know, women and children first and all that. But we genuinely do feel, I mean, there is proper character development. They are fully fleshed out characters, in spite of the fact that we don't actually spend that much time dealing with them or that. You know, the mother, I mean, the first time she sees Castle after the death of her husband, she has the balls to stand up to him and say, you fucked up. This was not supposed to happen, you know. She's never met the guy before. 
she knows who he is. She knows that he's caused a lot of death over several years. Not entirely sure if it's four, five, or six, because at different points in the movie, they say different things. Anyway, she still, she points a gun at him. I mean, she's doing that before she realizes it's the Punisher, but she keeps pointing the gun at him. And I love this. He's ready to accept that she might kill him. He's ready to take that as the, you know, penalty for... Now, he's ready to be judged by the same measure he judges others. And the girl, you know, she doesn't come off as needy, but we can tell that she wants, you know, a new man around the house, you know. And it's just, it really works, you know. She's also a pretty decent enough actor, the little girl. You know, and that's not necessarily the case for child actors. The humor is great. There's a lot of, you know, real macho humor, you know. If you think that this movie is too brutal for you, I mean, it's that thing of if you have to ask, you know. If you think this might be too brutal for you, it probably is. It's about as brutal as they could get away with. I don't even think it would make a lot of sense to try to count the amount of, like, decapitations, twisted necks, broken bones, blown up body parts, you know. It's just... Director Lexi Alexander, she has two movies, two or three by now, I think. Or maybe a little more, but, like, of the really, really known ones, at least two by now. This and Hooligans, if that's what it's called. Something like that. And both of them are really, really brutal. Also, Hooligans, very well worth watching. It's actually slightly better than this because it doesn't quite have the problem, the couple of problems that this does have. Forget the fact that it's Elijah Wood. Trust me, I can't stand the babyface motherfucker. I watched that movie in spite of him, I enjoyed the crap out of it. I don't even like soccer! And, you know, being Danish, that's like, you know... Yeah. That's like being born with an extra chromosome, or something. Anyway, Lexi Alexander is like the perfect chick to be with for any guy who's like a guy, you know? The only case that this wouldn't be true is if the guy would actually be too threatened by her because she's just total badass. She was like a martial arts champion, you know, stunt person. Now she's making these ultra-violent, really effective guy flick movies that actually hold up, you know? And, you know, when you watch her in the documentaries, also just really awesome. She's kind of hot, if you ask me. I certainly think so. Plus, she's, like, German or something, so she's probably a freak. Just awesome, awesome chick. I hope she makes way more movies. Many more movies. And the... You know, what she does with the material here is just perfect. This is literally the best I can imagine we could do for a proper Punisher movie. This does, this movie does expect you to already know the Punisher. There's not really big exposition on his, of his backstory. There is some focus on the backstory. We get we only really see the dead family in flashbacks, but it's not like it's, you know, I mean, I already mentioned the surrogate kind of thing. It's definitely part of the movie. Also, Wayne Knight as Micro is actually pretty good. I don't like Wayne Knight. Period. And I don't really like Micro, the character, either, but here he just really works.
the music we get a lot of real nice heavy metal and like maybe some that's more towards like rap I don't know if it was written for this movie but this movie at least has some connection to I think I think the band is called like Ramallah and Days of Revenge that fucking song kicks ass. It's used for the Red Band trailer, I think, and it's also playing over the end credits, so that kicks ass. That might be about what I can really say without getting into spoilers, so the DVD comes with a couple of featurettes, documentaries on it, where we get to see, among other things, the guns and Stevenson getting to basically play, you know, as he's training. You know, they ran him through these drills where he had to go into a room and take out everyone, and I'm so fucking jealous I can't even put it into words. There's a great commentary track by Lexi and the cinematographer, and I think that's it. That is it. If you are at all a fan of The Punisher, watch this movie at least once. It... yeah. That's the bottom line. That was my spoiler-free review of Punisher Warzone. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.